So yeah, uh, thanks for having me. And yeah, I try to uh, give you an overview about the Lenovo offering for Azure Stack HCI solutions and how you can use it in a simple and easy way. So I try to be quite technical. Uh, uh, if that's okay for everybody, and uh, and uh, let's have a look what I have for you. So first, quick intro from my side, and uh, then uh, we have a quick look on the Microsoft ecosystem. You have seen it quite often, and how does it map to the Lenovo solutions? And uh, more details on our offering for the Azure Stack HCI, and uh, we'll finish up with some management, of course, how to use Windows Admin Center for managing the whole stack. And first, uh, some words to me. So here you see a picture from last week. So uh, we really had a in-person event in Austria. So when you're below 100 or so, you can have an a in-person event in, uh, and everybody has uh, is okay with Corona terms, then you can have an in-person event on stage. So it was quite uh, interesting after when we, when we had the last session, Carsten, uh, was March 2000 in the office from Munich, from Microsoft. So True. it was a long time uh, having no direct uh, contact to customers and partners. And as you see, so you need to have quite a lot of room for 100 people. And yeah, that's also part of my job. So I'm doing the Microsoft nerd role here in uh, Lenovo for the DACH region, so Austria, Switzerland and Germany, doing pre-sales support, uh, as you know from the vendors, so helping customers and partners. And together with uh, one of the MVPs you, you now see <laughs> in the second picture, so Carsten, uh, as I call him, my friend and MVP, my personal MVP, of course. So, and um, we do trainings together for our partners. So if you're a partner and you're interested in learning all the stuff you, you saw the last days, um, we also are able to train you in three days if you can handle that uh, pressure. And uh, yeah, having fun on events means, okay, we normally we go to events and show our solutions. And of course we try to have also some fun there. And together with Carsten, we founded the Hyper-V community in Germany 2011, so it's almost 10 years now. And uh, it was a little bit quiet, Carsten, so we should have some sessions the next uh, month. Totally so. agree, and it's it's already <laughs> 10 years. It's 2021, <laughs> even in the in the third quarter. So it's 10 years ago, Udo. I, I forgot <laughs> when it was, when we started it, I guess it was April or May or so, but yeah. It's 10 years now, so we should have a party on that 10 years. So that's my job here at Lenovo. So I'm doing that now the last three years uh, almost. And uh, if you need some support on that, uh, just let me know. So our demo systems are uh, based a all, and I, I have also my own demo system in Stuttgart, but it's an EMEA uh, uh, briefing center. So everybody from all countries around in that region can have a visit there, of course, when it's uh, available again. So now we do most of the things uh, virtual. So we do briefings and webcasts and POCs. So customers and partners can um, also uh, log in remotely and do their own tests. So, and we do it together, whatever what you want to see. And we use that for our trainings also uh, uh, for the demos for the customers and the partners. So. So all stuff available, uh, let's say remotely, and uh, if it's possible to have some meetings uh, there, then we will have some meetings there. Again, so first a quick look. You have it seen already uh, quite often, I guess, just to set the basics where we are talking about. So as you have seen from uh, Thomas, the Azure Stack Arc is the important beast for the next years uh, to talk to infrastructure, which is somewhere in Azure and uh, somewhere around. So in uh, all data centers of the world, your local stuff and of course today we talk about the Azure Stack family and just to make sure that everybody is on the same page. So we are talking about the beast in the middle, Azure Stack HCI. So we also have an offering for the Azure Stack Hub. So Cosmos talked a little bit or some questions have been yesterday on that. The Hub is uh, still there, so uh, it's not going away, but it's like a niche play for some special use cases. So you need to have a use case for the Hub. And uh, it was, uh, the wording was Azure Stack 2017. So Carsten has also 
had also one and uh, we, we converted that a little bit to the Azure Stack HCI because that's a new beast uh, which is more important now and uh, it's the kind of same the hardware stack but today we talk about the Azure Stack HCI offering from our side and yeah as everybody knows sometimes it's uh, lost maybe in the in all the sessions so we are talking about the Azure Stack HCI which is yeah going from converged or what I call Lego on the light on the left side, going to uh, talk about the HCI layer. So standard servers with uh, some fast networks, as you have seen also in the session from from Helmut a bit. And uh, if if you have not seen it, so where you find all this uh, fancy stuff. So Microsoft has done this Azure Stack HCI catalog already in since 2019 so when windows server 2019 based systems have been called azure stack hci so it was not just for you but for all of us a little bit confusing in the early days when the new operating system hit the market and uh, so in the azure stack hci catalog you find all the solutions so the integrated systems how microsoft called the the uh, new versions let's say and the validated node uh, what we call sometimes certified nodes that's what I want to show you the next uh, minutes. So first, let's start a little bit with how does our offering look like? Because the Microsoft stuff you have seen quite deep the last uh, sessions. So here is our view on, on the solutions we have. So the Think HR platform is uh, like in the middle and on the right. So everybody hopefully knows that Lenovo not only has laptops and tablets and uh, also owns uh, Motorola, so you, we also have the mobile phone uh, area, but we also have uh, since 2015, IBM sold their server business to Lenovo, uh, which have been done by with the PC stuff 2004 or so, if I'm correct. I was not there at this time. And, uh, but the, the regular servers are called sync system. So you can have servers networking as you heard yesterday is gone. Um, so our leaders decided that network stuff is better. We, we work together with the leaders there, like with Mellanox, uh, we have heard already uh, during the days uh, or NVIDIA networking, you call it now and storage. So we have offerings there for servers and storage and uh, together with some certifications, you get to the point that it's a Think HL uh, solution. And Think HL always means that you have software and hardware kind of together in a, a certified node or in an appliance. So we have set two names like certified nodes or single nodes, and the appliance is when something is added so we only we, we not only have the microsoft certifications of course we also have something for you if you uh, want to use different solutions from other vendors and uh, today we have a look on the azure stack hci solutions and uh, with what i start normally when i talk with partners and also with customers is a little bit uh, have a few back in the days when we started with now we should call it again storage spaces direct kind of and that's how i use it so when i talk about storage spaces direct of course that is a storage layer <coughs> excuse me in uh, both situations or in both solutions but uh, we now call the s2d again what is windows server based so that is what you buy normally you buy a validated node from lenovo and then you add the windows server data center license and the windows server data center license has these features you need for the storage spaces direct so you of course you have hyper-v sometimes you get the funny question if why microsoft doesn't support other hypervisors but yeah if you have your own hypervisor why should you storage spaces direct is more the the, the beast in the middle so software defined storage what you have normally and the software defined networking which is sometimes used uh, to separate the workloads um, but you still, and that's why I have it green, so with Windows Server 2022, you still have the same functionality, so it's not, it was not going away with Azure Stack HCI operating system, so you still have it, and from my point of view, it's still the yeah, most done installation in the field as of today, so because Azure Stack HCI is quite new, let's say, and uh, all the management tools also Thomas showed you are still coming, let's say, and uh, 
when everything is uh, is in place with the next release end of this year and with all the management capabilities uh, from Azure portal, I guess that the game will change also a little bit. But as of today, I would say 90% something are still having Windows Server based uh, HCI solutions from Microsoft. Of course, you know you, you use the admin center for uh, managing that uh, beast and uh, you connect to Azure for hybrid services, but there's no need for having a connection, which changes in the in the next picture. So that is the, the view we normally start with, with partners and customers when they have some ideas what they want to uh, have in their data centers. So that's the two choices you have. So you still have the Windows Server based HCI solutions. And I guess also Carsten is doing a high percentage still on the Windows Server based solution as we do some of them together. And the new view is this almost the same. You use the same validated nodes. Uh, you use uh, Azure Stack HCI operating system, which has the same features in the uh, in the operating system, like virtualization, storage spaces, direct for the storage layer, and storage storage spaces, uh, and software defined networking, of course, for the separation. And as you heard the last days, uh, uh, last sessions already, a lot of features are only coming to this Azure Stack HCI beast. So uh, you don't get it on the Windows Server if not everybody was in all sessions yesterday. So there will be over time, there will be uh, a differentiator on features uh, between the solutions. Of course, both have this storage layer in uh, in the in, in the operating system, but like stretch cluster you have seen from the Carson sessions and from our friends from Fujitsu. So uh, there are features which are only coming into the Azure Stack HCI operating system or also the GPU session yesterday night was really interesting what's coming. And all these new features are just coming in the, in the Azure Stack HCI operating system. That's why we are doing also these sessions these two days. And of course, you can use Admin Center. You can do everything on PowerShell first, as that was called when I was a Microsoft employee 2012. So everything can be done through PowerShell. And the, the basic features you also can do now with Admin Center, of course. Some features are, or some settings are only available on PowerShell, but most of the things like installation, you can install the Azure Stack HCI, as you have seen from Manfred, uh, all through the Admin Center GUI. And here you have to connect the Azure Stack HCI to the Azure for billing, of course. Uh, Microsoft wants to get your nine euros per core per month, and the function only starts if you have registered it. Uh, otherwise, uh, you cannot install, as uh, Helmut also uh, mentioned in his session, you cannot uh, use it for virtualization. So that is the, the new change that you have to have connection to the Azure, uh, and uh, then you use Azure Hybrid Services as, as Thomas has have shown us, and Azure Arc will be what we will play around the next couple of uh, weeks and months. So what we have seen in the Azure Stack uh, HCI catalog are these two areas. So you have this validated nodes, <clears throat> what we call the last year's certified nodes to confuse the Russians, I said always when I was younger, and uh, the integrated systems are called appliances because we have set branding for, for other uh, solutions also, but on the end, it's the same certified hardware. And uh, if nobody has mentioned it before, maybe good to know that there is only an Azure Stack HCI certification run. So there is no Windows Server uh, certification anymore. So it's just Azure Stack HCI and uh, the new version of the certification tests for 21H2. So for the new version, uh, Cosmos showed us a little bit um, uh, also on the roadmap slides, which coming the next two months or so was, uh, was the wording, I guess, or, below, or, or in that two months. Uh, this certification also brings the certification with 20, so Windows Server 2022. So uh, once the certification for the Azure Stack HCI 21H2 is done, all 
systems are also certified for the new Windows Server. So uh, it's already GA since 1st of September, if I'm correct. Um, uh, but the solutions like uh, uh, Storage Basis Direct, so Windows Server based systems with uh, uh, with our certified nodes or integrated systems um, are coming uh, or gets listed on our pages for Server 2022 end of this calendar year because the certifications are uh, have a combination. So you only do the Azure Stack HCI certification and with the newest version, you get also the certification for for the Windows Server for the newest one. And that's why uh, no one installs now a Windows Server based system already with uh, Server 2022. Uh, the tip here would be uh, if you buy a system for, for a Windows Server based HCI, you can already or you should already buy the uh, uh, the OM or ROC license for Windows Server 2022. So you already have the newest versions. You are uh, already allowed to install virtual machines with this uh, version. And once uh, the certification for the platform is done, you could upgrade your uh, servers from 2019 to 2022. But uh, funny why sometimes uh, the shipment of that servers because of the situation in the industry could also take two, three months. So maybe if you order it today, you and you get it end of the year, so you already can install the Windows Server based HCI solution. So for me uh, as a technical guy, this uh, validated uh, slash integrated system is more like uh, the PowerPoint or marketing trick uh, because the hardware, at least on our side, is uh, still the same. So we do the same certification. Uh, it's just one certification run you do. And if you use it, send for Windows Server based or for Azure Stack HCI based, um, uh, that's your decision kind of so and if you have already bought certified nodes last year uh, you are fully uh, supported if you upgrade that uh, or you change the operating system to azure stack hci operating system so from a support point of view uh, if you uh, bought of course the sync hr advantage support we call that normally it's kind of mandatory also for Windows Server based systems. Uh, so everybody or every partner which gets trained through our cycles are uh, buying systems with the Sync HR support and you can uh, keep the Sync HR support in mind like, like the solution support. So if you just buy hardware, of course, as before and you say, OK, I'm not interested in any support, uh, not on the solution side, not on the operating or whatever side, then you are down to hardware only. So you get the new power supply or a new disk if it's broken, but nobody helps you uh, uh, in the solution area. I'm guessing that no one is uh, doing that uh, uh, just for, for labs maybe or for demo systems, but for production systems, everybody I guess is uh, is on the side having support for the solution. So you can have this HCI support or the solution support for both sides for the validated nodes or for the integrated system systems. Um, the only thing is if you are listed on the Azure Stack HCI catalog, uh, when you check the integrated system, so there are just three windows, if I'm correct uh, this morning, they agreed with Microsoft on a contract that there are more agreements. So especially this joint support agreement. So you have like the red phone to talk to each other. So uh, Microsoft can talk to Lenovo support and vice versa. That's more the agreement on the support. And you have that Windows Admin Center integration where you uh, uh, get guided through the first installation. So you already hit the button, then, then uh, the server needs some updates before or during the first installation. So that this is a deployment phase. And uh, also you have support uh, in the cycle of updates. So if you do the upgrades, what I show later, then you also need to provide more support. So if you are listed, if your vendor is listed uh, on the checkbox integrated system, means he agrees with more contracts with Microsoft and he also needs to establish processes on the support so uh, each other can talk to each other and they get more training and things like that. But from the hardware point of view, that's what I tried to tell you, that both systems are good to run um, both Windows and uh, Azure Stack HCI operating system for the solution. And if you have that uh, Think HL support, 
you are good to go for both uh, areas. And of course, we, you can, if you're a customer or a partner, you can uh, select that you want to have the deployment services with it. Normally, so as we train the partners, they are doing the installation with you. Uh, if there is no skills available, you also can book as a customer the deployment from Lenovo. Of course, then that uh, Lenovo expert comes uh, into your building and do the deployment. You can buy it as a, as a fully managed service, so you just pay something per, per month, uh, including hardware support, everything. You can integrate also in that um, solution the Azure Stack HCI payment, so it really depends. But the message here well, from, from the technical side is the solutions or the hardware stacks are 100% the same. They are the same network cards left, left and right. They are the same storage devices. So um, that's why it's more up to you how, what you uh, uh, what you configure or what you buy. If you start from scratch and you want to have Azure Stack HCI, of course, the integrated system uh, is what you normally select because the HCI operating system is already installed on the box, but you also can check it on our configurator that you uh, get a certified node because you maybe have already a three node cluster, then you buy a fourth node uh, to extend it and on that uh, journey you maybe uh, decide you want to uh, go to Azure Stack HCI because of all the new features. So it doesn't really matter for me uh, and there's no real differentiator, just more on the support side. But if you start, as I said, with the certified node, you also can uh, add or you add it to the Think HR support. So it's the it's same good support for if you change the operating system during your project. So and uh, some guys already mentioned it that okay the certification has already an outcome and that is the important thing as uh, you saw yesterday already that is what we call this best recipes it's basically um, a listing where all the versions of firmware and drivers have a, a have a uh, you get a package with uh, the listed drivers and firmware which went through that certifications so we don't do that every day but when we do that you get like the best recipe you also get it like a pdf and you also can download it manually and because it depends really on the customer or size of the customer some enterprise customers will have their own a software to deploy firmware and drivers so you can download this package and can you use your tool of choice to um, install the versions uh, to your stack we will later see how how you can do it through windows admin center but if you don't have that in place or you have different uh, uh, tool sets for bigger customers so you also can we also have a customer who, who is deploying firmware and drivers with system center configuration manager on a few hundred nodes so it really depends and the best recipes like here is from the the, the screenshot the last one from july 2021 so you get four set kind of uh, certified nodes, you get the package which comes from the certification runs. So it's not done every week, but uh, once a month or once a quarter, you get the new package uh, where you can be sure that this firmware and driver package is certified, especially for Azure Stack HCI and for the Windows Server based solutions. So there are two, maybe some, some different versions sometimes, but normally it's the same because the, the driver testing and the, the certification, as you, as I said, is the same testing. And so that's what uh, we normally prove. And you, so you don't need to go to, uh, to our support pages and, and select uh, single versions of drivers for firmware and for network cards or so, and then find out if it's working. So that is uh, for me the best thing since Azure Stack HCI catalog was kind of uh, created from Microsoft 2019, um, that you have these bundles and also every vendor kind of have this, we call it best recipe. So you have this package what you get uh, for updating and installing your solutions. And a quick look on which configurations uh, uh, you can uh, do also on the Lenovo. Of course, we have that hybrid storage solution, what Microsoft calls the configurations with uh, HDDs. So we or I personally normally stay away from that HDD configurations, just if you use it for, maybe you have heard yesterday the, the um, 
white paper, Carsten and DD did for the backup. So we used for the backup target here a maximum configuration with HDDs to have really a big, I forgot the, the terabytes, a few hundred terabytes for backup. So you can fill up this uh, uh, old style configurations with the maximum HDD capacity you can uh, uh, bring into the system. So it's still the, the 3.5 inch uh, HDDs. So for productive virtualization solutions, I normally try to stay away because the uh, repair time of an HDD is really not good. And as you also should know now, uh, every HDD configuration, and that's the starting configurations you see here, every HDD configuration needs to have a cache in front. So that's the easiest or the smallest bundle you can start. Uh, two cache drivers uh, are minimum and four capacity drivers is minimum. And uh, normally if we go once forward, the flash storage a configuration allows you to not use an, an, an cache if you don't need. So uh, what I forgot to tell you on the other side uh, is on the other page. So uh, uh, the HDDs have cache for read and write in front. When it comes to flash storage, you only have the write going to the NVMe if you take the configuration in the middle. And that's why uh, what I call always my UDO configuration, uh, partners and uh, customers normally end up with this SSD only. I, I call that the right side. So you only have SSDs for capacity. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> As you also have the choice of different uh, SSD uh, drives, so you also can start with, you know, uh, yeah, how you call it easy or uh, uh, small configurations with small performance. Uh, I try to find the right word and also like mid-range SSDs and they also are like from Samsung. They produce really fast uh, 12 gigabit uh, SAS SSDs. So you also have the choice on the SSD side from different uh, speeds and also of course from different price points. And that's why we normally have most of the configurations I do are SSD based on the right side or NVMe based if the customer needs really more speed, then we uh, try to avoid this uh, cash to capacity ratio and also the calculations and the numbers because you, uh, if you have heard it maybe also, so you need, you should have a optimum configuration. So like uh, the ratio is not just the percentage of the, how much cash you need for the capacity, also the number of drives. So you should have like here in the picture two to four or two to six, two to eight to be optimal. Or when you need three uh, cash devices, you should go for uh, like three to six or three to nine. Everything else also works because the Windows Server is uh, doesn't take it to, uh, with a lot of uh, error messages. So he also will accept if you have two to seven, uh, but uh, you should not do it if you want to have an optimal running system. So just to uh, complete the picture, if you need a little bit more speed, uh, you also could uh, go for the storage class memory as Microsoft calls the persistent memory modules, just uh, to be complete here. We have sold so far not too much of that because there's really a niche place for that configuration and those are the capacity of this storage class memory modules uh, are not you know, so high. So the biggest one I guess we have now is 512. So what Intel should use. Um, so we had some questions on that, but uh, I have not seen one in production. Uh, and you also lose some uh, slots for your uh, RAM. So because that's the same slot you use, but it's the shortest way. I would keep it in uh, in, in mind. Uh, it's the shortest way to the CPU. So if you need to have really fast storage, that could be an option. With the new Intel platform, it's getting a little bit better, but you still have to use uh, slots for your memory. So as Helmut also talked with Carsten about this networking and just uh, put it in so you have it in the reference in the recording and also in the, in the slides if you get it. Uh, what we normally do in the configuration, so that's a design I have learned in the production that we all uh, often do. So we, we have like six ports normally if it's uh, switchless, what I show uh, next slide, uh, or uh, you, you talk to switches, so it doesn't matter for me. So normally if you go to 
uh, come to me. So we, we end up with a configuration. It's looking like this. So you have like two dedicated storage ports like in the back. Uh, in the old days, you would have like fiber channel or iSCSI also dedicated. So you have dedicated storage ports uh, for the uh, East-West traffic, as we call that in the solution, so cluster interconnect uh, for storage traffic, and then you separate if you if you can do the management of the host <coughs> on the left side, and you uh, do two separate NICs or more. That's just a minimum. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> And you use two ports for the virtual machines. So that's what we normally do or uh, what we present. And if the customer is OK with that, then normally the partner decides that and knows how, how the a network configuration at the customers is. We, we start with six, six ports. And of course, you can do it converged as uh, you do it with just two ports. And in all configurations and all deployment guides you also find on our pages, it always starts with these two ports. Uh, because of an easy reason, all the certifications uh, for Azure Stack HCI catalog are always done with two ports, so 210 or 225 gig ports uh, in a converged uh, configuration. That's why you have it in all papers and on Microsoft pages, because the certification is always done with two ports only. Uh, but uh, I hope Carsten agrees that we <laughs> we normally do the separation of the storage traffic and to the virtual machines and, and so on. So that is uh, quite often the discussion point in the configuration. And the second one is, OK, if you start small, I heard Helmut more likes uh, the uh, switchless design also as a two node design also with switches, of course, if it's possible. So we would normally start here also with SSD. So I'm always pushing that they use also 25 gig pipes in the back and not every small customer of course want to buy 25 gig switches and that's why the uh, switchless design with two nodes and direct connected cables so i have heard through the, through the sessions the last days that some guys have problems with that so i have not heard from any problem of my from my partners or customers that there are problems since uh, one or two months with uh, with the witness but of course if you have switches so the game uh, goes uh, until three microsoft tested until five i personally when it's more than three nodes i always would go especially on four or more with switches because you have more control about your network but for me it makes sense to and with three nodes with switchless because then the cabling is also quite complex and all the IP range uh, it addresses you need to configure it, but it would work, but we would normally uh, stop on three nodes with switchless. So my personal Udo advice, but if you have switches, of course, it's always better to have switches. I would also recommend that because you have more control about your traffic and you have more settings on the switches and uh, the monitoring is better and so on. But uh, these two configurations are quite often happening, especially when it comes to Windows Server based. So when it's not stretched, uh, one rack, one room. Uh, on the left side, we had this discussion with Carsten already. So two nodes, uh, we quite often have a longer cable than five meters because the configuration or the, the functional uh, things are not changing when you have a 10 meter or a 25 meter cable between it but that's what's what's normal so on a two node uh, it's still not stretched but maybe it's uh, let's say two racks in a room and um, two rooms are uh, just next to each other and you have a longer cable so from the solution point of view for windows server based solutions so s2d that's possible uh, if microsoft would find out that it's a stretched cluster uh, the comment normally is that the support call ends once they know that the stretch cluster, but you have heard that. So coming to the technical details quickly, no surprise. So every vendor use uh, the basic 2U server. So that's our, if you know it from the server branding. So our sync system, SR650 is a 2U machine and the 630 is a 1U. So with uh, the new branded, uh, in, with the new versions of Intel platform, so the Ice Lake platform, which uh, was showing up this year, you also get the 1U um, if you need it. So I have not needed it the last years, but there are some customer cases where you pay the rec space maybe on your provider per unit, 
for a rec unit, then uh, you could save money per month if you just need a uh, a small two three node machine with two three uh, with with four or six uh, drives per node. Then you can use, of course, the the one U server. It's basically the same server, just in a different chassis. So we call that as our st standard rack server, 630 and 650. They are different numbers, so not so important. We call, you know, flash and, and hybrid. So we have the H and the F and so on. And you have the new platform and the old platform. Uh, I guess no, no rocket science here. So you have a standard server, standard industry server. What's maybe different here is we have this small fancy server. So we have seen it maybe on some videos when <clears throat> Cosmos had it on stage because he likes that small box. What I try to show you a little bit more in details. It's our uh, edge server and we also have certified this small edge server with uh, with the uh, Azure Stack HCI. So you see it in a second. First, if before I get the questions on the chat, uh, we also working on certifications on AMD based machines. So the the platforms already. So that's our REC uh, standard REC server names or model names uh, uh, we have for for AMD. They are already listed in the Azure Stack HCI catalog since almost a half year, I would say. But um, we have not turned that into a, a certified solution in terms of the, the hardware is certified, but you, it's not like an MX version. So it, you don't get it as a sync HLMX if you want. So we also have customers and uh, I call that uh, on the top always Lego. So you have a list of certified components and you can build well, before Microsoft called it like do it yourself, but with certified components. So you don't go out and just find out if it's working. We have tested it. Uh, you get the list, but you don't get this best recipe if you remember. So you don't get this driver firmware packages and you don't have the HCI solution support. So I would call it it's on the way. So we have already certified it. If a customer wants to have it and is OK with that uh, non HCI solution support, then uh, it's good to go. We have some in the field. So especially when it comes to service provider type of customer, where they have like maybe a different coverage on Microsoft support and on Lenovo support, then it's maybe a good idea. Otherwise, for a regular customer, I would uh, stay with the Intel based uh, think HLMX, but as you see, so you have it in the catalog. We are working on it. It's coming and let's highlight a little bit the SE 36 uh, SE 350. So our edge server, whatever you call it, small box. Uh, what makes it special? So it's uh, made for environments where you maybe have don't have a data center. So you have some edge designs like uh, in the wind turbine or something like that or in production area um, and uh, it can handle a little bit more uh, heat so up to their model up to 55 degrees celsius and you can uh, shake it a little bit what i say normally as a joke because it has uh, only flash systems in it and also the chassis is is a little bit more for vibrations and shock especially what you have in production areas and that brings it first time when I saw it uh, to be honest I said okay what do you want to do with this small box but from the use case uh, what you need for edge uh, systems it really makes sense and you see also the Wi-Fi antennas here and uh, the 5G antennas so 5G would be for for a remote management, if you really have it off site somewhere, you know, like in, in robo sites, so you could have the, the, the management through 5G um, and uh, you also can use it for, for Wi Fi. So let's have a quicker, a detailed look on the network. So these two small boxes are really good for for the two node system. So you have it somewhere in the in the robo or, or branch office. Uh, where you have no no real IT stuff and uh, maybe also not a rack. Um, so you can use it. And so we have uh, the versions, there are different versions of that model. So you also can use it as a standalone system, of course, for production areas or for Azure Stack uh, for IoT edge uh, uh, systems. And uh, so standard Windows Server or whatever you want to run on it. There are a lot of systems uh, certified. But for especially Azure Stack HCI and Windows Server based, so you can run it with these two nodes. So we also have done some German 
speaking videos with Manfred. So if you have uh, uh, want to have a look, so it was last year, I guess, or maybe it was this year, really forgot it. Uh, maybe Manfred knows when we did the video series for that uh, small box. So you can plug it with, uh, with direct cables for storage and you have uh, one gig uplinks and uh, the fancy thing is you also can use it for Wi-Fi. So maybe it's the first and only certified system where you really can use Wi-Fi. So if you have some stores or other use cases where your workstations or your uh, point of sales units are only having Wi-Fi, then you also can use this connection to the uh, other systems. And for the storage, as you see in the middle, you have this two pipes for 10 gigs, so it's uh, it's limited for 10 gigs because the, the box is quite small, but you can put in uh, up to eight NVMEs per box, so you get some terabyte of storage also in, and you can shake it a little bit. And here, just to summarize it, where you can put it, of course, you, uh, you also can wall mount it. There are different uh, tons of options how you can uh, uh, mount it. You also can have it in a rack, so you can have two in one U, so uh, next to each other with the power supply is external. That's why the box also gets a little bit smaller. And as you see here, you could also do like a small tower, so you can glue it together and have it in a funny uh, configuration. So all the, the systems I showed you and the configuration gets um, often updated and where you find all the stuff for the data center stuff uh, and we call it now infrastructure solution group. So the group I work was called data center uh, group the the last weeks and years and we changed that uh, in a, in a rebranding with the rest of the Lenovo groups. We are now the infrastructure solution group. So don't be scared if you see a different wording, but it's still the same. So the data center stuff from Lenovo, all kinds of details you find in our Lenovo press. So everything I showed you or uh, what, what's coming next, you will find in details there. Also the deployment guides, uh, guides I, I talked about, the best recipes you find on our support pages and you have for both versions, let's say the REC server version and the, the smaller SE350 Edge server, you have a very detailed uh, deployment guide. So uh, if you have any idea how Windows works and uh, what's PowerShell, so you will get a guide how to really deploy it with or without admin center. So it's quite easy if uh, if you follow the guide. So it also has some details in it, especially for the network configuration, how you want to use it. So to end now with the solution management, so we have seen already a few management solutions uh, during the week from other vendors. So of course, Every normal server vendor has its own infrastructure management. So we, we call that X Clarity. So everything which has to do with X, with management, with systems management is has some X Clarity in the word, in the wording, in the naming. And the X Clarity administrator, which is the beast who uh, controls all the infrastructure, so storage and servers and switches, if you still have it, as you have heard, it's the switches are certified also for Azure Stack HCI. The next versions, you need to have a specialized uh, certification for the switches. You can handle with that uh, administrator and like the baseboard in, in the server, inside the server, they're called X Clarity controller just that you have heard it once. There is always a free version, which are good for the regular uh, management. And there are a few features where you need the Xclarity Pro version. And that, that's just a few uh, euros per server when you buy it. And you also get uh, the possibility to open a support ticket. So it, I would uh, define it like, okay, if you want to open a support ticket for that software, then you need to have the pro versions and, and pay a, a few euros per server when you buy it. Uh, but the, the functionality is um, is there to uh, monitor and operate the server, so the basics, and uh, it's a free of charge. So basically you download a, a virtual machine just to show it. Also this software is uh, uh, made for automation. So we have PowerShell commandlets for the administrator. So that's a good thing for our Microsoft stuff. So you also can use automation which uh, fires PowerShell to set administrator and just a quick uh, a screenshot from my lab. So I have seven server in my lab now. You see two or more have warnings because uh, 
you need to show also warnings. So it's a network cable which is not connected, and that's a basic management. So you can have alerting if a disk is down and so on, and you also can automatically open a ticket in the support if something is going wrong and you get maybe tomorrow a new uh, SSD and you didn't know that something happened. But we want to see how it's integrated in the Windows Admin Center shortly. So of course, uh, the extension model from Microsoft allows us to hook up into the Admin Center and here just a quick view how it works. Normally the, the extensions from the Admin Center always talk to the uh, to the uh, management system from the vendor. So in our case, the XLT administrator. And but as it's especially for two node systems, you would not always have somebody who is uh, uh, working on that administrator. So there's a new the red arrow here should show you what I show you also in the second uh, uh, gives you a additional possibility that the extension talks through PowerShell with the server. And as you maybe know, each server normally has this LAN over USB or whatever is support called. So you see a, a connection from the Windows operating system to the baseboard management controller, you would call it in generic, so to our uh, Xclarity controller. And you also can get all the information uh, especially when it comes to which version of uh, firmware is on the uh, uh, network cards or on the servers. Uh, you get that also through the PowerShell way. Uh, so that's quite new since uh, a couple of versions that you can have uh, a second way, especially for small customers. You don't need to have this Xclarity administrator running in the virtual machine. So the key features I just uh, go quickly through, so we will see it a little bit in the demo. Of course, you see the cluster if it's a cluster, so it's not just made for a cluster or for HCI, you also can use it for if you still have bare metal Windows Server, um, uh, the integration. So you have the inventory and the alerts, so you get a uh, uh, notice uh, that something is wrong. It's not a monitoring, of course. So the monitoring is done in the Xclarity administrator for the hardware. And also Microsoft normally tries to tell you that the admin center is no monitoring, so it's a management tool. So admin center does not uh, alert you when something is wrong. It shows you the problems, but of course in the back when you run it with the Xclarity tools, you also will get the errors if, uh, if, uh, if uh, a disk is broken or a power supply. But more interesting in that certification run is that system updates. So uh, you have it for, I show it in the last demo, in the last video quickly, you have it for the installation process and for the deployment, and you have it during the life cycle, of course. So you can combine the drivers, firmware, and the Microsoft updates. So the life cycle, and that makes this uh, certified nodes different from the Microsoft point of view to the, uh, what they call it? So we call it appli appliance and they call it integrated system, sorry. And of course you also can see the disks in the server, especially for the HCI solution. Sometimes it's helpful when a disk is like broken, you can start the workflow to um, uh, get rid of an old disk. So it also tells the storage pools that you retire a disk. No, it, it, and sometimes you have remote uh, locations, of course. You want to have uh, the, the light on for a SSD or for HDD, uh, and so the technician doesn't uh, destroy something else. So he really uh, pulls out the, the wrong, uh, not the wrong disk. Uh, so you can uh, turn on the lights and so on. And there's also a workflow to remove it. So quick, just as you have seen it, so when you install the extensions, it always extends uh, the, the view. So you have now this Xclarity integrator. If you use it together with the administrator, you would see in the admin center all your hardware servers. Of course, we normally don't have so much errors, but to show you that it's working, we normally in the lab, especially we have some servers with problems and um, uh, something prepared for you. So you would see the server and if you click on the server, you also can go deeper. You can log on to the remote console of the server and going into the configurations in the in the BIOS and so on. So you will see some inventory, of course, uh, but I want to show you the, the last video quickly and have some room for questions. So you will see the inventory, as I said, what all you expect without leaving the administrator 
the performance and the the uh, temperatures and so on. And but the important thing is uh, when you have a cluster like an HCI uh, or a storage basis diary cluster, the important thing here is that you see the cluster has a problem or not from also the combination of hardware alerts or situations and the software. And especially what's important for HCI clusters. Uh, on Microsoft side is that you have the same firmware level, right? So, and here you come back to this best recipe. I hope you see it a little bit in the middle. So if you update a cluster during the, the three, four or five years you run it, uh, you have the possibility here to really have the view on the uh, best recipe. So if it's compliant or not, you will see it in a second in the video. And here is a quick picture on the disk manager. So you can uh, really have a workflow just you can replace it or you just put the lights on. You put the lights on on a server that somebody is doing a recabling remotely. So he is not doing the wrong thing on the uh, on another server. And there's really a, a workflow. If you would see it that you want to continue, it will first be retired in the Windows server and then it will be uh, replaced uh, physically. Uh, so that's like a, a small workflow, but we will see it in a video uh, and the end of my presentation. So I just talk you through and of course you have seen Windows Admin Center quite often. So I skip a little bit. So the guy and all these videos you find on YouTube. So our service guys also are doing uh, like short uh, videos how you can configure it. The guy here just adds a cluster to the Windows Admin Center. So normally you would install it with Windows Admin Center when it's an HCI. Then you have the dashboard and when you click on this integrator, you here have these two uh, options. <laughs> Carsten tries to say something to me. Udo, we have some questions for you. So maybe you left some room for four to yeah, five I'm, questions. I'm done in a minute and then we can okay. go to the questions. So here you have these two options I tried to uh, tell you. So this native OS management. So without having this management tools in place, you can talk to the Windows server or to the HCI operating system uh, uh, without using the Xclarity administrator and so get you get the same functionality. Uh, you get the inventory as you see here in the dashboard and uh, we jump quickly to the um, update process with the best recipes. And of course you see the best recipe is uh, in place and it has some uh, new versions, so it, you're not compliant and you'll see all the details of the best recipe and just quickly jump to the last process. So when you fire it, you can have it running now or run it later and you have a nice, uh, that's what, what I want to show you as last, you have a nice um, a uh, few how what is done already and what what is done as the next so it will uh, copy the, the files to the servers and instead of uh, using that administrator uh, it's uh, uh, done from the windows server or from the hci operating system you do the upgrade of course first the server will be put in maintenance mode and the virtual machines get uh, uh, migrated to the other nodes and all the stuff you uh, you expect so that's the end and uh, we can have some questions now. That's great, but now my questions are gone in the live event Q&A. <laughs> Can you open them? Oh, there, yes. there they are. There they are. OK, I have them. Um, so starting. Yeah, from Lenovo perspective in switchless topology, can I upgrade from two nodes clusters to three node clusters or do I need to rebuild the cluster? I heard these questions, I think, three times already, but yeah, uh, that's yeah. correct. Yeah, it's always the same. So it's uh, from two node direct cabling, it's always more work and more planning uh, to upgrade to the three node because you would to need to add more devices. It means more network cards, more network cables. So you can do it quite kind of online, but it's a lot of work. Yeah, you, know? you normally would shut it down and then add more network cards for switchless for three nodes or going to switches. So everything can be done online kind of if you really plan it correctly, but if you really want to do it or not depends always on, on the skills of the people. And normally a two node is for like robo sites or so. You would get the maintenance window easily and then do the, the trick in a, in a downtime, but you don't need to rebuild the cluster, but there's more work to do. You agree? Yeah. 
Yes, I do. And uh, just uh, think of the additional subnets you need. You need a subnet for every cable, right? So next question, can I do a four node switchless configuration supported by Lenovo? Uh, so we would support it because Microsoft supports it up to five, but uh, uh, we would not recommend it. Yeah, so. Okay. But you would what get the, the support, yeah. Yeah, what is the maximum cable length Lenovo is supporting between two nodes using the switchless option? Is single mode supported? I think I know where this <laughs> question is leading, right, Udo? It's a little bit <laughs> we know stretched, it, right? And, uh, it's quite easy. So uh, single mode means stretched and stretched is officially not supported. End of story. That's the hard answer, yes. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> all, all, all between what, what partners and customers are doing, uh, yeah, it's up to them, you know. Yeah, but, but the physics don't are rely on Microsoft support if you stretch the storage basis direct you know, cluster. If if you want yeah. to have full support and on uh, especially this, you know, we don't offer single mode for that stretched uh, scenario. Yeah. If you buy it somewhere and use it, that's your deal. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, to translate Udo's genau, it's German for exactly. So uh, <laughs> in Leno in Lenovo. Is Lenovo also able to configure number of used CPU cores as presented yesterday by Dell via BMC? Uh, not right now. So uh, you would need to do it not through the Windows Admin Center. So you can do it, of course, in the servers, but not in the graphical version. Yeah. Yeah. So there, are, uh, there are PowerShell commands to, uh, where you can do it, but not uh, if you want so sexy as you have seen it yesterday. It's in the pipeline for the admin center uh, plugin or extension, but not today. Yeah. Okay. The next one. Um, I don't know if if you remember where you talked about it, but what is the ratio cache capa ca capa cache capacity? Yeah. Capacity. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no problem. Maybe yeah. it was about, uh, about the backup target, uh, but usually we would say at least 10% caching devices, more is better. Correct, uh, 10 or more. So it's always a question if you know the environment from the customer uh, he has already in place uh, good enough or not, or you have data you can rely on. But uh, if you know nothing, then the Microsoft, uh, so has nothing to do with Lenovo, so the Microsoft um, uh, number is 10% or more. So normally if you have a cache system and you, if you have uh, uh, seen all the details what I showed, I would always try to stay away from the cache systems because then the extension uh, expansion is super easy. You just plug in an SSD on each server and done. And uh, but if you have to have cache or you didn't listen before, uh, let's say then uh, you put in more cache because if you want to extend the capacity, you are good to go maybe, or you also need to add uh, cache devices. That's why I try to avoid set configurations. Yeah, there is much more about cache devices. We have to have a ratio. So ratio and, of and numbers and, and, uh, and percentage. even multiplier. Uh, if you have three caching devices, six, nine, 12 capacity devices and so on. So much more there, and there was a session from Cosmos at the uh, CDC Germany 2018 where he was talking about cash, and it's available still online to watch if someone wants to do that. Next question, do you do you Rocky support it in switchless topology? So does Lenovo support Rocky and switchless topologies? Correct, yeah, thanks. So you, you have both options, so you can do iWarp or Rocky. So uh, normally all the guys in our community are doing Rocky because they know how to configure it, right? And uh, we trust on, and that's most of the time, Mellanox network cards and switches because we trust on that vendor the last years. And we as Lenovo also use that vendor for our high performance computing stuff with InfiniBand. So this vendor knows how to do Rocky, but on the end you have the choice. So I have customers who are using iWOP and, uh, 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 or Rocky. So you can do both, yeah. So you have yeah, both choices. A, yeah, and an addition from my side, because I see this off not done, you have still to configure DCB on the hosts. So uh, configuring your pri pri PC, PC, how it's called, PFC priority and uh, configuring which, which is lossless, because otherwise you don't get the pause of frames if the, the network is full, and that's very important. Otherwise, your cards drops. Correct. Drop we, 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 
uh, I call that always in short, like configure the host the same way if you have switch or switchless, then you yeah. are easy to go and you don't forget it if you add it then later on on the switches. So yeah, but we have set discussions, Carsten and me, especially with uh, Mellanox or our Microsoft guys, and we all know this uh, Microsoft uh, recommended page uh, uh, that uh, use IWOP to get less support calls, but on the end, the guy who, who deploys it has to have some knowledge. End of story. Yeah, exactly. So uh, Lenovo, uh, Lenovo Udo or Udo <laughs> from Lenovo, um, your session is up. It was an interesting one. I heard some of it before. I even recognized some slides from our training. <laughs> Correct. Well done. Um, so thank you, Udo, and thanks Lenovo for the support of uh, the Azure Star uh, Azure Stack HCI days. Uh, I really appreciate it, and you know, without you guys, a free a free uh, online conference wouldn't be possible.